Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Bola Bola Show. We're right now in the middle of a uh, interesting football summer with the Euro and the Copa America plus also not to forget you know Malaysia is involved in the World Cup qualifier AFC zone as well. Plenty of football action. But on today's topic it's a little bit more interesting because of one particular unfortunate recent incident. But before I proceed further, let me bring in my two co-host buddies. First and foremost, Bala, how's it going? Steven, thanks for bringing me back to the show. Like what you say, I think football is uh, seems to be a seamless kind of activity for the month of June. Uh, World Cup qualifying, uh, Euros, Copa America. And I think we're also losing some sleep. Uh, but there was another say. Elvin, coming in? Yeah, indeed. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, and indeed, another show today. And uh, like what you guys say, you know, everything is rolling. Football is rolling. Football is like non-stop, uh, guys. So it's been like going on and on and on. And we're not sure whether... This non-stop football may have contributed to some of the incidences that happened, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so we, all, we we shall find out further. So uh, today on our show, of course, we have a great guest on our show today. You know, we have our first doctor on board. So you know, yeah. not just any doctor out there, but a very experienced sports physician. You know, among his many positions, he was the former head of the National Sports Council (NSC) and the National Sports Institute (NSI), and has contributed a lot for our national sports. So, with a very big thank you, we are honored to have Dato Dr. Ramlan Aziz on our show. Welcome, Dr. Ramlan. How are you doing? Hello, Arvin. Steven, Bala. It's, hello, it's, uh, hello, hello. Yeah, it's, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me tonight. Yeah, great to have you on board. So, uh, Doctor, how has retirement been for you? And what projects are you involved in these days? <laughs> well, in the morning, I get up and then I can feed the cats uh, <laughs> without having to hurry, you know, to, to, to go to the office and all that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's taking a bit of adjustment because, you know, my life in sport all those years ago for, for many years was like a, a sort of a roller coaster, okay? And um, not because of, uh, you know, any, anything, but because uh, I had so many functions. Um, I was an executive, uh, chief executive officer for ISN, but also I, I still continue practicing uh, my sports medicine, uh, my medical duties. And then uh, for many years, I was uh, still the team doctor for both uh, hockey, national hockey, and also for badminton. And um, I was sort of a sort of a glue, uh, organizing all the sports science services, mm-hmm. and and there's so many things, and anti doping as well. Um, after I retired, uh, before I retired, just before I retired in 2020, it was last year, just right after the the onset of the pandemic, um, I was actually uh, serving two years as director of the national, um, you know. Uh, uh, agency for Anti-Doping or ADAMAS at the Ministry of Youth and Sport. So, uh, so it's a wide range of things. Uh, quite, quite, quite a handful there, Doctor. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I have to say, I, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot to be said about doing so many different things. Mm-hmm. But, but, mm-hmm. but to me, it's, it's just like, uh, you know, playing an instrument and you're playing different songs, you mm-hmm. see. Yeah. Uh, you nice still, still have the same it. mindset yeah. and the same approach, yes. Yes, um, so there you go. <laughs> you have you have a band, right? It's a drum I think I'm not mistaken. Oh, uh, yeah. I I still have my my uh, alumni. You know, because I was in Malay College. Uh, mm. you know, from mm. MCKK. To MCKK. So yeah, we 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 get together. You know, uh, about a few weeks or almost every month uh, before this. Wow. But of course, now it's, it's, it's difficult to get together, to play together and all that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I play drums. I play a bit of guitar as well. Uh, and uh, with the proper motivation, I might be able to sing, you know, uh, <laughs> for my supper. Right? <laughs> so there you go. All right. But, uh, yeah, but it's, 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 it's all good. You, you know, you, you need to, to, to live life, enjoy life and, you know, do good things for, for, for yourself and for other people as well. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, true, true. Fantastic, doctor. Yeah. So, you know, uh, doctor, you know, as, as what you mentioned, you know, indeed you had an illustrious career, you know, many can admire. So, uh, before we dig deeper into that, can you let us know how it all began? You know, what made you take up an interest in sports medicine? Oh, <laughs> you know, the first time I mentioned this to anybody, I was still, uh, look, after my housemanship in uh, Kuala Lumpur Hospital, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I graduated from UKM 
in 1987, uh, uh, and right right after that, we, we, because we our our training hospital was in uh, Kuala Lumpur Hospital, right? At the time, they call it General Hospital Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, GHKL. Yeah. GHKL. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. So so I can I can more or less know your vintage, uh, Alvin. <laughs> 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 because basically nowadays it, nobody ever says GHKL, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what they used to call that as GHKL. Yes, Clang. yes. Yeah. I I I pine for those days, you know, when, when yeah. people say the familiar things suddenly it brings a tear to my eye, you know. But the thing <laughs> the thing about, about all of this is, um, I had already decided at that point if I were to specialize after my housemanship, you know. Mm-hmm. So there were there, there were several options, and uh, I talked I talked it over with my wife. And uh, uh, every time I did uh, a posting as, as a houseman, you know, uh, the senior medical officer or the registrar would say, Ramlan, you know, you should do ONG, you know, you should do orthopedics for each successive uh, uh, posting. And my wife said, no, 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 you're not going to do ONG. You're not going to spend, you know, uh, all hours of the day and night looking at uh, the female genitalia. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, maybe you, you, you want to do something uh, uh, and to be a surgeon would be busy as well. And I said, okay, right. You, you run over options, you know, because, because my wife is a doctor as well. Uh, she was still studying at the point. She was two years behind me. But the uh, thing is, okay. suddenly yeah. I thought, I, I think instead of looking at the, the, uh, the traditional things, why don't I look at things which people have never done before? Right, mm. or maybe there's there's the dearth of of expertise or people doing uh, certain uh, new uh, emerging uh, disciplines. So I I love sports. Ever since I was at school, I played basketball for Malay College, rugby for for my house, and I was a, a shot putter for the school as well. I finished fourth in Kuala Kangsa District, defeated by three huge guys from Sungai Siput and uh, you know. And, uh, and other areas within that Kuala Kansa district. Mm-hmm. And uh, there you go. But but the thing was, I somehow, I felt that, uh, I, I felt a certain affinity uh, to sports. There was also some, some, some thought about combining medicine and law uh, to do medical jurisprudence as well, which I, I was thinking seriously. In the end, I, I plumped for sports and I think I've never looked back and I, I have not regretted my decision at all. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think I think it's a wonderful decision that you opted to go into sports medicine <laughs> because that pretty much led the path for you to become the chief medical officer for our Malaysian Olympic contingent from Barcelona '92 to London '2012. That's six Olympics altogether. Wow! I mean, six um, it was, yeah. Yes, I mean throughout these uh, twenty years as a as a CMO for the Malaysian Olympics. How far have uh, you seen sport medicine develop in this country and where it is today in Malaysia? And mm. is there any aspect that we are still lacking compared to the elite nations? Well, there, there, there are certainly more people doing sports medicine, that's for sure. Um, and and there's, a, there's a simple reason for that. Because sports medicine uh, uh, had been recognized ever since they established the first Masters in Sports Medicine course in the new steam layer, right? Mm-hmm. Was that in 1998? That was the first batch, I think, or was it 1999? And uh, I was actually one of the examiners in the early years because uh, the um, the head of that uh, particular um, section was an orthopedic surgeon who's, who was uh, in my batch in Malay College, doc, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Razif uh, Ali, and um, and he he you know he brought me in and uh, I I took some some. Uh, several batches of, of uh, master's students for attachment. At the same time, I was also the examiner, uh, one of the external examiners uh, during the final exams. So that was, that was a good uh, opportunity. But the thing about, about, about all of this is that I sometimes if we monitor and, and look at things from the beginning until the end, uh, I always uh, tell uh, the, uh, the, the master's students who come to me for attachment, and they still, they still do. That's one of my main functions, uh, you know, um, just before I retired. And even in retirement, I'm taking, you know, uh, several students under my wing uh, who come over for a two-month attachment at the National Sports Institute. I, I ask them, you have to answer this basic question at the end of, of your, your time here. What is the difference between sports medicine and medicine in sport? So they will look they will look rather mystified, you know, because to, to them it's, it's one and the same. Out of all those um, uh, 
uh, budding uh, sports physicians over the years, I have, to, I have to declare that only two got what I meant, you know, at the outset, right? Mm. The rest were all mystified mm. and I had to actually show them what the difference was, you know. Because mm. basically, basically, when you do clinical sports medicine, you just sit in the, in the room, wait for the patients to come, and then uh, you do all the good medicine. It's good medicine, uh, uh, without any doubt, but still it is medicine in sports, you see? But sports medicine is something else. It's about, it's about being there when we train, uh, when we compete, and then, and then understanding um, uh, all the various aspects of, the, of, of, of physical, mental development, nutrition, and all that. So in, in other words, it's, it's, it's about not only the, the mastery or the medical requirements of the job, but also the scientific uh, elements of, of performance medicine. So this is something that that uh, that sometimes people people miss, you know, because it is it is it is convenient uh, for most people to just do the, me- the the clinical aspect because because it is not demanding of your time. But if you you if you are a a, a true sports medicine practitioner, it it really um, takes a lot of your time, you know, because you really have to engage. You're not the sort of uh, doctor who just turns up at the airport and joins the national team. Right in in mm-hmm. any of uh, uh, you know assignment, mm-hmm. you 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 have to be there. You, the athletes are not the ill or infirm. You know they're not sick people. They are the, they are young and healthy. All right, mm-hmm. yeah. So so you really have to connect with them, and to do that you have to have a certain presence. And the best way to have a presence in hockey at least is when you know you know that you've made it when the coach gives you a hockey stick and asks you to pick up the balls that go you know. Astray all over the, the stadium. <laughs> they say, they say, Doctor, can you help me? You know, uh, because they, they, the ball will zip all over the place, and uh, that's another another thing. You know, you really have to make sure that uh, you stay out of the way when somebody, you know, hits uh, a hard one uh, or, or flicks the ball uh, during penalty corner practice and all that. So there you go. I, this is the one thing I worry about, and um, the my continued presence in in ISN is to actually to, to continue to fight for, for this realization and for people to, 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 to uh, you know, to forge. Of course, everybody is different. I, I feel that uh, with differences in personality uh, mm-hmm. and, and uh, a range of, of uh, interest in subspecialties and all that in several different areas, because we're not, we're not interested in the same area, all of us. So I, I, I appreciate that. But the thing is, uh, they must always have a connection with the, with the athletes that they serve, all right? And, and uh, uh, this is not about, about uh, being difficult about or precious about anything, but it's about uh, doing things the right way, uh, the way it should be done. You know what I'm saying? So that, that yeah, this, because at the end of the day, you can get lost in all this thing about old oh, people, you know, uh, nodding to you and then acknowledging your, your status as, as, a, as a doctor or whatever. But at the same time, you're still a servant uh, of 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 uh, these people and what they do, uh, they they themselves uh, are, are serve their own performance. You see, because whatever mm-hmm. that they do, they must they must actually do well by themselves, uh, for themselves, so that they can get to an optimum state for them to perform to the best of their ability. And it is the same for us. You see, we expect uh, you know our athletes to be world class. Uh, why should we uh, differ? We should also aspire to be as world class as our athletes, uh, you know, are required okay. to be. You see, sure. see, this is this is the problem. It is the same for other other aspects as well. For people who, um, you know, who manage athletes, uh, who look after the logistical, uh, you know, matters and all that. So everybody in the entourage have to have this thing about I want to be the best that I can be, and it is it is okay, um, you know, if you fall short. But you must always strive to be the best that you can, and uh, and this is something that that uh, is is missing sometimes. You you shouldn't. Uh, uh, there should be um, a spirit of of servitude. It's it's not so much like you are trying to be a slave to anything, but mm-hmm. if, if we, uh, you know to be anything at least let's let's go for excellence in whatever they do, and to have the right spirit of of uh, service to to the, to the athletes and their performance. Mm. Okay, that is uh, quite a uh, detail. But uh, let's moving on with your good memories. So after serving for what thirty two years in the Malaysian sports scene, uh, be it in uh-huh. ASN or even NSC or even Adamas, the 
anti doping and malaysia is yeah. there any interesting story you would like to share with our listeners when you dealing with all this national athletics a uh, been in light moments or even be in uh, <laughs> you know, tough moments anything you can like like to humor us or even put us in certain uh, serious oh. perspective so so many you mean the time when we were all in the bus you know okay. about to leave for for we were in Athens Olympics actually okay. we were about to we were about to board the bus to leave for the airport uh-huh. and it was this athlete who appeared at the at the front entrance in his towel <laughs> <laughs> serious <laughs> yeah yeah in his towel saying to everybody tunggu 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 you know <laughs> so there, there you go you know and we expect this 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 you know these young people to be champions you know is 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 a wonder that they can turn up on time at the stadium and <laughs> so things happen things like this happen and sometimes uh, they might have been having some difficulty but we we didn't really know what the story was but you know that that, that, that mental image of somebody uh, hanging on for Or do you like to his uh, tower around yeah, the country? It, it, thanks, lah, doctor. He's stuck on my head now, basically. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> did the athlete But, did anything after that? Did he warn or did he, did he oh, able to he, recover? He got, he, got, he got a whole uh, round of whacking when he boarded the bus. That's for sure because he made everybody <laughs> wait. And fortunately, he was he he. I don't think he had a shower actually. He just changed into oh. his, his clothes. There was no time for a shower really. Because he wasn't actually wet when he <laughs> there you go. So that's but, one of the things. But in terms of perspective, wise for a sportsman, right? When you had this kind of when you start the day with this kind of uh, rushing, or how what's the mental mindset at that moment of time? Oh, well, hey, I, look, um, um, just just to illustrate, you know, sometimes how much fun it can be despite all the seriousness and all that. Yes. Because mm-hmm. because we're at the Olympics, you spend 29, 30, 31. The longest I've been away from my family is 32 days at the Athens Olympics. Oh, it was okay. miserable. You know why? Because I was there. I was one of the first to be there, last to leave, and missing the family and all that. So and and uh, and we didn't win anything. You know, not not one single medal. And uh, everybody was knocked out in the quarterfinals, in the first round, so on and so forth. Uh, athletes only stay uh, for about one or two days after the competition ends. They don't really come uh, more than one or two days before the competition program starts. So what what happened was um, I was there from the beginning and until the end. So that's 32 days in in Athens. So wow. but 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 the thing is, you 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 don't really count the days as such. You know, you sometimes in quiet moments. But when you get busy um, from morning until night. You don't really feel anything until you just plonk yourself on the bed and say, you know, I had a long day, and then off you go to sleep. Mm-hmm. My last Olympics, uh, 2012 in, in in London was was really good, in the sense that uh, we actually won something. You know, Pandalela was the first lady to win yes. a medal, yeah, yes. ever, yeah, Pandalela yes. Rino. Yep. She got a bronze. I was really pleased for her. She's really doing great guns, and perhaps she will do well uh, this uh, coming Olympics as well. And I thought Lee so, Chong Wei uh, came close for the gold medal. Oh, I tell you lah, I tell you. And that's an that's another story about Lee Chong Wei. Uh, this one we can tell because it's public knowledge already, yeah, isn't it? Uh, mm-hmm. When he injured his ankle and all that. Mm-hmm. But that was the ankle. But you see, he's he's a champion in terms of of bringing himself up, you know, from such a disastrous uh, situation. Um, he injured and tore, you know, his ankle lateral ankle ligaments. Um, it was it was quite bad, and um, and it was it was you know um, too too close. That was at the Thomas Cup, if you recall, yes, uh, mm. that year. And then he had to prepare and and bring himself up again for for the Olympics. So what happened was actually I can write a book about this. You know, um, it can it can be titled uh, "Back in 65 Days" because that's how long it took. Uh, for us to to bring him from 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 the diagnosis when he came back from uh, you know from uh, was it China or Hong Kong at the time, and uh, for him to get on the plane to to start competing at the Olympics, there were so many experts at the time who said, oh he won't be wouldn't be bought you know the the, the armchair uh, mm. commentators you know yep. they're all experts in their own way but sometimes I don't know why people make uh, predictions you know um, you know. Uh, Uh, you know, uh, predictions of doom and negativity. I'm not so much into that because because I'm the guy who's stuck with making this happen. You know, 
uh, and to, to make things happen, I cannot afford to be negative or to be down about anything. All I have to do is just look at the task and then plan it and then execute the whole thing. And then, and then at the same time, uh, keep the athlete on the straight and narrow because uh, at that point, the athlete would be in a position where he is thinking, I'm not going to make it, you know, uh, I'm going to fail and all that. Then you, you have to, to bring him up and say, look, uh, we have this uh, plan and you go along with him, you explain what the plan is and suddenly he's, 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 um, he's encouraged and he sees uh, that it's possible. And later on, as you go along, he gets more and more encouraged as he sees the progress because you can only take things on a week-to-week -week basis, you know. You shouldn't look at that whole thing and say, oh, we will get you back in, uh, you know, in a month's time. No, you never make such predictions. All you have to do is say, this week, you will do one, two, three, four to achieve A, B, C, right? So for that week, and then the next week, the next week, and the next month. So before you know it, it's on the plate. So that was what we call, you know, in psychology, uh, it's called goal setting, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, short-term goals are the one that is most important in terms of, of being, being, uh, being uh, dedicated and, and you, you focus on the short-term goals in order to achieve the long-term goal. Once you, you focus and say, oh, you need to win the gold medal and all that, I think that is one of the most difficult things when, when you know, people who, who bask in reflected glory, you know, you know when, when you, you've got nothing to do with it, but, but yet you want to ride on, uh, on, the, on the bandwagon. So you say, mm -hmm. oh, we need to win this, we need to win that. We need, uh, the athletes do not need that sort of pressure. They already know they have to win the gold medal. You know? yeah. There's no need for anybody to drum into it. And then, you know, hawk the, uh, the back pages of the national newspapers about, uh, you know, all this uh, public chest, chest thumping exercises, um, you know, at the athlete's expense. I think, I think there's no need for that. We just leave the athletes to do what, what, what they are supposed to do because the coach is there. You see, uh, in, in many ways, the coach is my best friend uh, in, in many instances, but also the coach can be my worst enemy. You know why? <laughs> <laughs> really, simply because... If, if I'm, uh, the coach is understanding of the requirements of my job uh, in helping him, okay, uh, to, to, to serve the athlete and, and uh, you know, to, to manage his injury and all that, then it is in the athlete's best interest and, of course, the coach's best interest to allow me to do the job the way it should be done, meaning there should be no interference. I will always take into account what the, the coach uh, has outlined in terms of the general um, uh, objectives and how the player uh, fits in within the general objectives. You know, sometimes players are so important and uh, in a team situation because you're talking about, you know, your audience is got, you know, thinking about uh, football, right? So we'll try mm -hmm. to keep narrow on that um, because team sport is, is, is very, very difficult. It, it, is, it is different from, from individual sport. Uh, where it is actually easier to 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 manage um, all the uh, all the sports science uh, developmental uh, requirements, you know, physical uh, nutrition, um, uh, psychology, so on and so forth. But you multiply that by twenty two or twenty three, okay? Then you have different individuals who have different mindsets. When I was I was uh, can I tell can I relate the story about uh, what happened at the Sea Games in two thousand and nine? Yeah, sure. like uh, please, please, yeah, please. This, this yeah. is your phone. Yeah, yeah. So, well, what happened was, I think this is a good illustration of, of how, uh, you know, sports medicine and sports science uh, personnel can, can actually assist uh, in good faith, uh, in good faith. Because at the end of the day, um, there's always a problem when, when we cannot uh, get through uh, to the athletes and the coaches that we serve. The thing is, what, what happened was, um, uh, I, I was, I was a, the chef de mission, uh, for Malaysia at the Sea Games in 2009 in, in Laos. And um, uh, Malaysia was playing Vietnam, I think it's the first match. Um, mm. And um, what happened was, was it Vietnam or Thailand? But it was the first match. Please, please, I, I, I stand to be corrected in terms of the actual thing. But we lost 3-1, all right? And one player was sent off, right? Uh, I think for a second bookable offense, and what happened uh, as he went off, he kicked uh, the, the you know he kicked several bottles, uh, water bottles, and was, of course the the seating, uh, the mm -hmm. team seating as well. So the frame of the of the of the bench, and uh, I was I was up there, I was looking at this, and I said this will not do. 
So um, then the whole thing was in chaos. And the day after, the coach came to me. Um, uh, now Dato, yeah, Dato Raja Gobat, he said to me, uh, "You look at this, Dato, uh, in the newspapers, uh, because he was he was referring to to some some people, you know. Uh, mm. When we win, uh, they want to take picture with us. <laughs> okay." <laughs> Yeah, but when we lose, ah, they kutuk kita habis habis kau kau. They kata, you know, he was he was very angry. So we know that the team uh, is not performing. Uh, uh, the plans were all uh, well laid out and all that by the coach, but it was somehow sometimes things can go wrong. Yes, and sometimes things pile up when they go wrong. So this is something. So then I I said, uh, why why am I here? Uh, I'm here to serve the the contingent. So then, I, at, at that point, it, it was it was coincidental that we had two um, psychologists with us. One was actually uh, assigned to um, the, some individual sports, including badminton. Um, but another one, um, uh, Dr. Jolly Roy, I can mention her name. She's now back in India. At the time, she, she we uh, we roped her in. She was with USM, but I I hired her uh, to help us out. And the other one is uh, Rebecca. Rebecca, uh, now doctor as well, PhD. Uh, Rebecca Wong, and um, uh, and and uh, I we discussed this thing and said, look, what's happening? They said, okay. I asked uh, Jolly Roy, uh, what are we supposed to do with the players? They're all a mess and all mm-hmm. that. So they, they, so she said, look, what we'll do is we'll have these cards with with uh, that that says uh, angry, sad, bitter, confused, you know, feelings. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they're supposed to 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 choose uh, whatever number of cards uh, that that uh, that you know that that signify what they were feeling at the time. Okay, so then then uh, the two of them would sit down uh, with the athlete one on one and and go through this thing and try to sort it out according to those feelings that they have because not everybody will have the same feelings, you know, all right, mm. or at least not of the same of the same magnitude. And then, then I, I I told them, look, something has to be done about the uh, the guy who kicked the, you know, uh, actually the, he, he was the captain <laughs> at that point. Uh, They're not okay. really unbecoming, so it's not something, you know. At the end of the day, when you are the captain, you have to have a certain sense of decorum and and uh, you know uh, of responsibility, you know, not only for mm-hmm. your for the team. And then I said, I think I will I will work with the coach. Working with the coach was was very important. Because, you know why? Because the coach is human as well. He also has has his own um, you know stick to 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 hold together as well. And, Other mind uh, by himself. Yeah. So he was he was he was quite quite good, you know. Because what I did was I just have breakfast and lunch, breakfast and lunch. Sometimes lunch and dinner with him. I just sat down with him, and I didn't do anything. I just ate and let him talk, basically, you know. So he was he was was really angry about certain things. So he was good that he was able to to use me as a sounding board, just get things off his chest, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, in the first instance, of course, it was, was difficult. But later on, he himself realized that uh, what we were doing was really good. Uh, he was he was feeling much better. So that was the coach. And then um, the captain. Well, the captain, I just called him into my room. No need to call, uh, to, to identify him. Huh? So I uh, I called him, I said, um, I actually, you know, uh, am about to ask the uh, the secretariat to arrange for a ticket to send you home uh, today. I told him the first available flight. All right, because I told him I will not have any captain in the Malaysian contingent behaving like this. So basically, it was that. So he looked shocked, you know, and, and you can see eyes turning red and all that because it's something he thought he could get away get away with that. So I told him no. This is unacceptable. So then it was just something that I, I needed to see. Uh, mm-hmm. How much uh, is he invested in his own role mm-hmm. and in his, as, as, as a captain and also as a player for the nation? Mm-hmm. Okay. So then I said, look, um, what do you feel about this thing? He said, uh, please, lah, Dato, you know, I didn't mean to do this. And I said, okay, look, I'm, I'm willing to make some, 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 some allowances here. You come mm-hmm. and shake my hand. Promise to me, after this, you will be the captain that we expect you to be. All right? Mm. So I was talking to him in Malay, of course. So I said, you promise me, okay? Because I'm the one who, uh, who, who needs you to be the captain that you need to be. Then, 
Then he, he shook my hand and then uh, we, we never said anything about that after that. So he, uh, he, was, he was safe there by that point. So they took care of the coach and the captain and of course the players. The next match, the following match, was really difficult because we were playing Cambodia. This one I remember. We were playing Cambodia. So first half, no goals, you know. So head full of chances, no goals. Like everybody was tense and all that. So I said, what's happening? So I said, we, we have done the best we can. There's nothing more that we can do. So you cannot interfere with the coach when he's on the field, you know. You have mm-hmm. to let him do his job, you know. However yeah. big you think you are, you know, you know, however high you may find yourself, the coach is, is the top guy when he comes to the field. So let him do his job. And uh, good or bad, you know, uh, win or lose, you have to stand behind him because you're part of the process, right? So then yeah. what happens? Uh, we, we were, you can, people can say lucky, but I think, I think it's, it's, it's a part of the destiny of, of people who want to do well, who want to achieve things for the nation. They, they eventually ran out and scored four goals in the second half. So we won 4-0. After that, we, yeah. it was, yes, remember? 4-0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then we were okay. We, we continued playing and then we won, we won. And then we, I think we entered the final. Was it the semi-final? Uh, yeah, semi-final against Thailand. Remember? Yeah, Thailand semi-final was the last, last group game. Uh, semi-final was uh, Laos. Laos. And then we beat Vietnam, yeah. Vietnam in the final. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. Thanks, thanks for the, uh, for, for the uh, <laughs> reminder. But against Thailand... You know, Thailand, they, they come in into this, this program. They were so dominant at that point. Yeah. Uh, they were expected to win, you know. Yeah. Like, like was the, a winner-take-all game, basically. Yeah. Basically, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. it was. Yeah. Uh, we won 2-1, yeah. right? Yeah. We won 2-1. Right. So, I, I, I can't remember the score, but we won. And, but I think uh, Fakri, I think the last minute Fakri goal, I think. 92 minutes, 92nd minute. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's, that's the thing, you know, at the end of the day, Thailand, if they do not win the gold medal at the, uh, in football at the SEA Games, it's like a national disaster, you know, right? Yeah, so, yeah. They, so they, were, they, were, they really had a, 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 a you know, hard time uh, going back to the country and uh, with the fans and all, you know, ruining all this, this, that and the other. So mm-hmm. eventually we won the gold medal as, as, as history has, uh, you, know, uh, you know, has recorded. And I think I think uh, it, it that one was was a big learning thing for me as well. Even though at that point I had done this thing for so many years and been to uh, World Cups with the hockey team and all that, but this Sea Games, you know, really demonstrated the whole br- uh, uh, breadth and depth of of what uh, you know my colleagues and I were able to to do uh, to to contribute to the team. And of course, the 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 the, the thing about this thing is that sometimes we have to take a step back. When people say, um, you know, uh, want to give credit and all that, the credit is always due to the coach and the players, right? We just take a step back and, and the only thing that we want is to be allowed to do the way the work the way it ought to be done. That is all. That is all that we need. And um, there was one time in, um, in Doha, 2006 Asian Games. And uh, at that point, you remember uh, Ku Ken Kat and Tan Bung Yong? They, they won the gold medal. Yes? Mm. Uh, and and uh, and by the time you know all the photographers came, the minister came, and all that, we we were all at the back there. But the good thing about, about uh, the minister at the time, uh, Zalina, it was, she called us over and said, "These are the people who are helping." And it was nice of her. Uh, we don't always get recognized, but but it is good in the sense that we ourselves, as human beings, uh, you know, we we need the motivation sometimes. And sometimes I feel I feel that the uh, you know the, the the players are the ones who will always, uh, you know, be of the greatest value to us in terms of the appreciation. Not to mm-hmm. say thank you even, but, but to, to comply, to cooperate with us in terms of the amount of work, the quality of the work that should be done with us. Because, we, because to us, it is most important to execute the work properly. And we cannot execute the work if you don't get the compliance and cooperation from, 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 from the player or the, the athlete. So that is sometimes, that is the thing that makes the difference whether the, the athlete or the player believes in you, believes in the process, all right? Sometimes they can go through the motions. If you look at, if you observe closely at how people conduct themselves in the gym, for example, right? You can give the same, um, 
uh, load the same number of repetitions, uh, you know, uh, for certain uh, exercise using machines or free beats or whatever. But your application might be different. Okay, that's why sometimes uh, one of the things that we uh, we introduce uh, later on in ISN was to actually have machines that can plot uh, what you do, the work that you do, against a graph uh, uh, that you're expected to do. All right, it's on the screen there. And there's the expected graph that you're supposed to do. And you're supposed to, to execute the, the exercise uh, and have the, your, your real line following that, that, uh, that potential graph, you know, so nobody can cheat. Because that's, that's what athletes do. Everybody wants to do a shortcut because everybody has this mentality. And this is something about, about Malaysian athletes of any sport. Um, you see, sport is, is not an island, you know. Um, it is still part of society at large, right? It is yeah, still a slice. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's, it's still reflective. Okay, we all agree that. Yeah. So, yeah. so we um, and all the all the good and bad things in society is reflected in the way our own athletes and players uh, behave, how they conduct themselves. This thing about being professional players, you know, whether naturalized players or you know players developed from young and all that. That this is about the acquisition of the players. But the most important thing is whether you are, uh, however you come into it, the, the attitude is the one that's most important. Sometimes we don't profile our players properly. We think the one that can uh, juggle the ball 2,566 times, you know, is the one, the most skillful guy is the best player and all that. Most of the time, um, sometimes people uh, with, with skill think they can get away with things. And then they can only last for 60 minutes. You've seen, you know, so many players like that, yes? It can last for 60, 60 minutes, and after that, they're cramping. It cannot last the 90 minutes, let alone the 120 minutes of, of a match that goes into um, you know, extra time. So this mm -hmm. is something that, that I feel uh, go, goes way back into how we identify athletes and how we, uh, we develop them. Most of the time, actually, um, uh, we specialize too soon you know, in, in football, I believe. Uh, and if you look at all the, um, the things that people do, uh, whereas the most important thing from, from, from uh, the outset is to make them, channel them into becoming good athletes first. All right? Mm. To run, to jump, to react, you know, with, uh, to be faster, to be more durable, to have better reaction, to be more agile and all that. So if you are a good athlete, of course, concurrently, uh, you know, um, the skill development has to be there as well. But I think I think if you don't have that, and suddenly you you concentrate too much on the on the uh, on the skill acquisition part and and the execution, I, I think it's, it becomes unbalanced and you're unable to to be at your best to execute the skill uh, properly, because uh, uh, most of the time when people train skills is at the beginning of of the of the okay. session when they're still fresh. I think that's that's not quite uh, on you know because basically. You need them to be skillful when they're tired, all right? When they're when they've nearly spent, uh, you know, at the at the end of the match and all that. So that's the time when they need to execute all of these things in the best possible manner, uh, as as they have trained all the all this while. You see, I I always tell um, uh, sports medicine students, uh, especially in the days when we were, you know, uh, struggling. At a time when sports medicine was not uh, recognized, even uh, those early years, it was only recognized in uh, 1998. Uh, when they finished, four years after that it was 2002, I think. Um, I myself, I was not recognized, you know, as a specialist by the Ministry of Health. Only when oh. uh, later on, yeah, I argued, I argued my case uh, mm -hmm. to the Minister of, of Health at that point who was actually a former deputy minister, uh, Datuk Sri Liao Tiong Lai. I argued mm -hmm. to him, I said, look, I, I teach this, 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 these people, right? I guide them. They do attachment with me. I'm the examiner. They are recognized as specialists. Uh, and, and I'm not. And I work with national athletes on a, on a daily basis, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they, 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 they see sports cases uh, once or twice a week. I do this every day of the week, every month of the year, you see? So mm -hmm. then, then he said, yeah, la, you know, um, this is ridiculous. So what, what happened was 
he um, he instigated some discussion and they, they examined the whole thing. And of course, he was easily uh, justifiable. All those years ago, when I first finished my sports medicine in 1994, because I graduated my Master of Science in Sports Medicine from the London Hospital Medical College, which is which was part of the uh, University of London, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in East London, you know Whitechapel, the Royal London Hospital? So that's where the college was. Oh, and now okay. it's, yes. yeah, it's now moved to, to Mile End, a uh, uh, mile further down the road, but still in East London. So anyway, um, that was the start. And to be honest with you, I, 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 I tell the students, if we do anything to help uh, to play a, prop, a proper useful role in the athlete achieving a gold medal, let's say if the athlete go, wins gold medal uh, in badminton uh, at the Olympics, okay? Can you imagine the impact that it will have on the nation? And let's study that. Uh, even my father, when he saw you know badminton players winning gold medals and all that, suddenly he wants to take out his old wooden racket look at and all that. So he wants to play badminton, you see. So uh, all these gold medals, uh, if you want to look at the, the, the feel-good factor, you're only celebrating for about, what, three weeks, maybe two or even three months. But then, then what happens, right? So to harness that, that victory, uh, to inspire younger uh, athletes to become future champions themselves, all right? So that is one thing, all right? To inspire future champions. The second thing is that not everybody who is inspired by all these uh, achievements uh, at the international um, you know, platforms, not everybody will become a national athlete, but they will value sports for health, fitness, and recreation. Okay? Mm-hmm. And one youngster playing sport is one youngster less on the streets. So we're also taking care of uh, crime prevention, you know, mm-hmm. development, these sort of things. So can you see when we spend one ringgit for sport and we, we demand, why are we spending all this two million ringgit for one athlete? That two million ringgit is magnified tenfold, you know, in terms of spending for, for, for youth development, health, fitness, recreation, recreation, and also... Mm, marketing, uh, promotion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, of course, with sports industry as well. So there you yeah. go. Yeah, so, many, many people. Why, many people don't look at it. Don't look at it uh, this way. It's a very holistic approach. Now you. you that's the thing. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. And suddenly, when when I think about that, I feel so much better. You know, all right? <laughs> uh, be, because otherwise, eh, uh, the 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 monetary uh, uh, rewards are not not that much, to be honest with you. But mm-hmm. but how much would you pay? You know, in the end, I was telling my wife the other day. I was reflecting on my. On my career, say how much would anyone pay to be at six Olympics? You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, something, something is. So those are priceless, lah, doctor. Yeah. Ah, there's a thing. I yeah. at the at, at the time you it happened, I never really gave it much thought. I just did yeah. the job. I, yeah. But now looking back, suddenly I I I I fully realized the 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 magnitude of the whole thing. And I think only, even athlete even athletics don't make it six Olympics. I think. Is there any? <laughs> I I don't think so. There you go. I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so. Maybe, maybe one day I can take up uh, lawn, lawn bowls and then still make it to the Oh, yeah, day. you can. Yeah. <laughs> hey, really? And yeah, no, yeah. no, no. At the Olympics, uh, I, where was that? Which Olympics was that? I think, I think. Yeah, London, so. No, it was in London. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I met this 63 year old lady. I thought she was an official. Okay. <laughs> she was a competitor from Switzerland, 63 oh. years old. Yeah. So, you know, so uh, all of us, Alvin, Sylvan, yeah. Bala, we can all do either long bowls or take up archery. <laughs> yeah. The highest level. Still not too late. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can still aim for that gold medal. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. You have but one life to live. So, yes, correct, correct, correct. Yeah, right. Yeah. So leave it well. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, exactly. I mean, for for a lot of us here as sports fans, even to be able to go to one Olympics is, you know, it's a real big thing. It's one of those moments that we will never forget for the rest of our life. So Indeed. you know, imagine being going for being going to six Olympics. I mean, wow. I mean, you were there in '92 when uh, Dream Team USA was competing in basketball, and you know, you yeah. were there in 2012. Yeah. When, uh, you know, when Malaysia was this close to clinch a gold medal. So that, that says a lot about, 
you know the experience that you have been through throughout all those years i i was thankful because i, I think i started uh, when i was quite young uh, i was 32 in 92 and uh, by uh, 2012 i was 52 right and when when you go to the olympics the team doctors are actually older than me you know Mm. So uh, I was 52, and when we had the meeting, I can see people in their 60s and 70s still, uh, you know, being chief medical officer for for the contingents. And here mm. I am, you know, farmed out uh, to graze in the on the farmland, you know, at at 60. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. That's why I was I was thinking, or oh, maybe I should take up long bows, or maybe archery, you know. Hey, <laughs> 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 not, not a bad idea. Maybe not we, a bad idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, anything else from yourself, uh, doctor? Uh, I think yeah. I think I think I made the point about about the importance of sport beyond sport. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. I think that's that's something that that has to be realized by everybody, uh, not least by the by the athlete, because they have to realize that they they bring an impact on society at large. You know, on the nation beyond just mere um, a few good factor celebrations for about three or four weeks and all that. They truly leave a legacy. Uh, you know, their success will leave a legacy that goes beyond the mere confines of of their sport, and uh, and uh, when they realize that, uh, then you know, perhaps it might be able to spur them, you know, uh, to work harder and more consistently, you know, for a longer time, to work seriously. Because at the end of the day, when you are selected to be an athlete for 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 the nation, that is a big deal, you know, a really big deal. I really envy them, uh, and is uh, even if you go for one Olympics. I remember last time for the London Olympics 2012. Uh, you remember that um, No Suryani was pregnant. Uh, remember that? Yep. Yeah, she was a, a rifle shooter, mm-hmm. um, okay. uh, and um, you know, um, and there was some, some some problem at the point whether she was she would be able to make it to the Olympics and all that. But we we made sure that, of course, uh, it was safe for her to go to the Olympics. We made sure that. At the same time, we needed to 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 work a bit harder to make sure that she was comfortable, and then her her pregnancy is not put at any risk because of the sport shooting. So of course, there's no physical harm to her. Uh, it's just that uh, you know uh, we really had to be careful because if there's any premature and uh, labor and all that, <laughs> we really mm-hmm. needed to yeah. deal with it. So that was another uh, another historical uh, you know milestone. Uh, a pregnant athlete competing at the Olympics at the London okay. Olympics 2012 so that was another good one good memory um so you see the thing about the olympic is sometimes sometimes uh, i i tell um uh, my sports management colleagues you know i said i told them uh not everybody who goes to the olympics would be in a position to win a gold medal all right mm-hmm. uh teams that go to uh, you know the euros or the world cup not every team will win gold medal or even second or third place or whatever but but the thing is at the olympics you become uh an olympian all right and oh. uh, at the athens olympics uh, remember alexina aulien in uh, artistic gymna- gymnastics yes yes i think i think later on she she went to new zealand mm. uh where her grandmother uh, lived at that point and uh, and uh, she she did physiotherapy if i'm not mistaken but she's no longer in in, in the country she's only migrated uh, but the thing was she injured her, her ankle at the athens olympics uh, in training and uh, the thing about the olympics is that for you to be acknowledged as an olympian you receive the the certificate that says uh, alexina aulien at the end the o l y olympian all right is a big deal you know is something mm. that that you can put on the wall and tell your grandchildren I was at the Olympics and I'm an Olympian. Mm. You don't need to win a gold medal, you know. Yeah. Uh it is a, a, a truly singular honor that everybody aspires to. And what happened was um she needed to to turn up at the at the at the gym, okay? At the uh at the uh, you know competition venue and and actually do something. So I had to sit down with the coach and say, "Look, uh we can do this we can do that or oh, that cannot be done you know so we worked out the routine for her uh that she was able to do right and she, she did uh, well enough but the most difficult part was the dismount right she had to she had to uh, sort of do a flip and then land on the on the on the on, you know land properly so uh, the landing was was not 
uh, was not excellent, but it was it was good enough for her to 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 complete complete the whole uh, routine. And there you mm-hmm. go, got mentioned as an Olympian. So that was a proud moment for her and her family, and of course for for us as well, the members of the entourage to see somebody overcome pain and you know uh, temporary disability uh, to achieve her dreams of being an Olympian. So that is something you know everybody goes to to compete. They have different goals and all that. But the thing is for us to, to be able to help, uh, to be able to be given the opportunity to help them achieve those goals, it is a truly great honour and a real pleasure. And this brings us to the end of this episode where we touched on Dr. Ramlan's illustrious career. And we would like to give a huge thank you to Dr. Ramlan for joining us here on this episode. But do stay tuned because there's a separate episode also involving Dr. Ramlan where we speak about the current events, especially with the recent cardiac arrest that Christian Eriksen suffered and is currently recovering. Also on that episode, we will dive deeper into heart health and also the injuries suffered by footballers. So do check us out on that episode and thank you for joining us here on the Bola Bola Show. Stay tuned and goodbye for now.